On these Wednesday nights, we've been looking at the subject, what is church? And we're going to continue with that this evening. Just to recap a little bit from last week. First of all, we looked at some of the wrong concepts of the church that it kind of got into the English language. For example, look at that beautiful church. And we concluded that church is not a building, church is people. Secondly, the thought, the uh, phrase, she goes to church. And we, this thought really that, uh, again, that we're going to a place to church, when in fact the Bible says we are the church. And then some people uh, might say, oh, I'm joining the church. And they would mean, well, I'm becoming uh, a member of the clergy or a priest. And again, the concept that the Bible teaches is more that we are priests of God. And God is preparing all of us to be members of his body. And then um, the thought, uh, where do you worship? That phrase, where do you worship? Well, I worship a new life. I worship at Hillsongs, wherever it is. And again, it's the thought that we are worshipping somewhere else. Whereas the Bible it teaches us that we are all priests to God and that he wants us to serve him and worship him continually. And that our church life is about relationships that we carry on through the week, not just on Sundays. And then we looked at the uh, two things that people have been saying and thinking about during this lockdown. Um, what is necessary and what is important? And how does that apply in church life? And the things that people thought were necessary and important were, um, and these are some of the things, worship, prayer, reality, relationships, faith, pointing people to Jesus, preaching the gospel, home groups, and all those things obviously are necessary and good um, and important. But one thing interesting that people uh, left out, the thinking about it afterwards, what I would regard as a very important part of church life, is leaders. And um, Jesus spent, before the day of Pentecost, three and a half years preparing leaders. Peter, James and John, the key three. Beyond that, the 12, which was, went down to 11. And around that, there were a, a large number of men and women uh, that walked with Jesus, supported Jesus, and were there praying on the day of Pentecost. So when the church was born and the spirit was poured out on that Pentecostal day, uh, and uh, there were a group of people ready to lead uh, this new thing that was called the church. Paul was of this mind as well when he went with Barnabas um, and then Silas planting churches, they would then go back very quickly to those churches. And it says in Acts 14, uh, verse 23, it says this, and when they had appointed elders in every church, so they regarded it that as the church started, it was very important that they had shepherd leaders, um, uh, servant leaders, people who would keep the, uh, the, the sheep safe, that would feed the flock, that would protect the flock. Um, and yeah, uh, it was, we see this again in Ephesians 4. Um, and Paul is speaking about the church, a big pa passage about the church. And he says this unusual thing. And he, that is Jesus, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and the teachers and some people call those the fivefold ministry of the church. But these were, in, in, in a sense, um, specialist ministries within the church. Apostles, the church planters, uh, the prophets who would uh, uh, hear God's word in a special way. Evangelists who were full of passion for the preaching of the gospel. And shepherds, the pastors and the teachers in the church. And then it says the purpose of them was not to do all the work, not to do all the evangelism, not to do all the prophesying or the teaching or the pastoring, but to equip the saints for the work of service, of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. So they were equippers for others who were going to do most of the work. And then further on in that passage, it says in verse 15, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him. So Jesus is the key. He is the foundation stone. He is the capstone. He is the architect. He is the builder. He is the very life of 
the church and we are being we are growing into him into his likeness becoming like him doing his work speaking his words verse 16 says from whom from jesus the whole body which is joined and held together by every joint i guess that's the relationships with which it is equipped when each part is working properly and so our job as leaders is to make sure that every part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds up itself in love wonderful words and then going back to jesus for often very significant uh, are people's final words and some of the last words of jesus in matthew 28 19 he said this go therefore and make disciples of all nations a disciple is somebody who would follow somebody not only physically but with their life and my theory is that every follower is a leader so the kind of uh, leaders that jesus wants are these servant leaders um, humble followers of jesus who are prepared to not be their own boss um, but to give their time and their lives to him we're going to uh, finish with some questions now which uh, you can do in your groups um, question number one why does the church need servant leaders what's the point why does jesus need servant uh, leaders in the church secondly what did jesus have to say about leadership what did Jesus have to say about leadership? I haven't covered this, but uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you know the answer to this. Thirdly, how can I lead? Maybe you've never considered yourself as a leader, but if you're a follower of Jesus with all your heart, if you're not a leader now, you will become one. So that's an interesting question for you to think about. How can I lead? See you soon.